too, sir. I'm the chief engineer. I didn't see you there. Today in this video, we will be showing you how to operate the DMR, and also the components behind the DMR itself. Come join me, and we will learn together. Before we begin, we're going to invite three members of Reactor Operations personnel to help guide us with the controls. It is by standard protocol that each member of Reactor Operations personnel occupies a singular control desk to ensure all systems are running nominally for operations. Observe as these switches are flipped. The feed water pumps along with the fuel cell locks must be engaged prior to startup. Once all systems are engaged and the startup is initiated, the facility automated management system will handle the startup from there. Once the DMR has been started up, cooling systems must be engaged to ensure structural integrity is intact. Watch as the operator flips the coolant inlet valves. Thanks to state-of-the-art technology, operators are able to remotely control coolant controls in the event that there is no available coolant operators. This is essential to night shift operations. Once the coolant controls are enabled, the power laser should be raised up to level 4. This is only optimal for startup though. For highest efficiency, the power laser should run on 3 with the coolant input on level 4. Now we will be moving on to our next subject, reactor core maintenance. Reactor core maintenance should only be engaged in the event that fuel is either too low or has been completely depleted. Reactor operators are to turn the keys at the same time and engage the maintenance system. The power lasers will be deactivated while the core remains in center position. This allows for easy access to the DMR in safe environments. Once the DMR has been disengaged and put onto maintenance, three operators are to head to Sector A to the Hadron Collider to collect three fuel cells. Once the fuel cells have been produced, they are to be dispensed and they can be collected via the DMR fuel dispenser or receptacle. Only one operator can hold one fuel cell at a time. Once the three fuel cells have been collected, reactor operators are to go into the core chamber and go to the structure access elevator, which is to the right of the airlock. Remember to wear a hazmat suit upon entry. Once the operators have arrived at the DMR, one operator is to go to each fuel cell console. From there, operators are to remove the depleted fuel cells and replace them with new ones. Watch as this operator disengages the fuel cell lock, ejecting the depleted cell. Once this is completed, he should then insert the new one and re-engage the fuel cell lock. This should be repeated three times. Once the fuel cells are all inserted, operators are to go back to the control room and disengage the maintenance system. Once maintenance is disengaged, check to ensure that all fuel cell lock switches have been engaged along with the feed water switches. Once this is done, you can restart the DMR. Once the DMR has restarted, operations can resume as normal. Alright future operators, we hope this video has taught you the basics of operating the DMR. It is now your turn to operate the DMR. Have fun, and good luck.